Welcome back to Cambridge Inside Out. I'm Robert Winters. Judy Nathans. And today is March 26, 2019. The last Tuesday Wait, of it's our... The, it's the end of the long March. March. Yeah, right. Yeah. The last Tuesday in March, actually. Right. <laughs> That's right, yeah. So, um, anyway, uh, we could talk civics all you want here, but I thought maybe t uh, today what we could do is basically get a little out of town. You know, the show's called Cambridge Inside Out, so this is going to be a little right. more out than yeah. in. Yeah, Robert's going to get a little stroll <laughs> in, the, little, in the wood, well, in the fields, which is nice. Yeah. So, anyway, the, the, um, the first point I would make is that one of the great things about living in and around Massachusetts is that it's kind of a historic state. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Old. it's... It's an old state. Mm -hmm. It's got a lot of history everywhere you go. And the remarkable thing is, is since there are a lot of people who are not necessarily from here, and even so many of the people who are from around here mm -hmm. don't actually know a lot of the, the mm -hmm. history that's all around them. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I thought maybe it would be kind of fun to, to um, look at a little bit of that. Yeah, which you, I mean, you've done this particular walk a lot. But yeah, so, yeah. you know, one... I, you know, in addition to all the civics and stuff like this, I have, you know, I teach mathematics, but yes. I also have some interest in historic matters, historic he's preservation. He's also an AMC leader. An a, yeah, local, local, local walks Boston, leader. Right. Yeah, so, so there's actually a series of walks we do. There's actually a cycle of five of them um, that are jointly done with the Appalachian Mountain Club and the Middlesex Canal Association. You do five a year? Uh, no, no, no. We do we do one in the fall, one one in the spring, one in the fall. Uh -huh. But we cycle through five different walks. Oh, different okay. Locations. I didn't realize that. I thought they were yeah. the same. Yeah. So no, 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 no. There's definitely but five. The canal walk is the same. It's uh, no. no? There are actually we walk on we walk along five different sections oh, of the I old middle section canal. Oh, I know that. Should have told me that. Yeah, no, it's time. Time. we can go there right. anytime you like, right? <laughs> Anybody out there? Just you, you want to give yeah. me a ride up there? I'll yeah. show you everything, <laughs> right? <laughs> so um, this past Sunday on the, uh, March 24th was the uh, the southernmost section of the old Middlesex Canal. Uh, actually, let me yeah, actually just, let's yeah. sort of show some of the imagery. Okay. Let's go to the postcard so, here first. Right. So you know, we this was part of our advertisement of it was this. Um, rather uh, picturesque little scene here. This mm -hmm. is actually in West Medford. Uh, this is something called the Brooks Bridge. And what you may or may not see in the picture is that there's a bridge going over something. Well, that something yeah. was the remnants of the old Middlesex Canal. I was going to say, there's got to be water under it. Yeah. <clears throat> so, well, at this point in the picture, Nothing. there was no more water. I but see. Because the Middlesex Canal ran, it, it operated from about 1803 or 4, mm -hmm. depending on who you talk to up until about the 1850s, maybe as late in sections to as, as late as 1860. And what was it used for, for industry? Or? Middlesex Canal was really, uh, it was driven largely by needs for commerce. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a way of connecting the Merrimack River, which extended all the way into New Hampshire, mm. and brought goods straight to the port of Boston. Do you have a map of that, actually? Don't uh, you? We we do actually. If you scroll down a we'll little bit, we'll come back to us for a minute. We'll come back to, here. Yeah, I'll, right. I so that image that you just saw yeah. there was a, of the Brooks Bridge, is what was called an accommodation bridge. It was part of the Brooks Estate. There's still remnants of the Brooks Estate there. Is but, this a good map? Um, this one, this kind. <clears throat> yeah, well, actually, there's several we'll get to well, here. Which is a better map? Uh, well, we'll, we'll, we'll oh, do both. Okay. Okay. that. So the thing is, is uh, uh, the uh, Brooks Estate got divided by the canal, the, the mm -hmm. you know, because you have to follow a, lev the, a level in order to have the canal work. It's, you know, because it's flat water, right, mm -hmm. except for where there are locks that change okay. the elevation. So the only really good way to put it was to actually cross the Brooks Estate. And, um, and to a, a, as an accommodation to the owners, they would build a bridge connecting different parts of the, of the land, right? Uh, and that bridge actually is in the photo. Actually, existed all the way into the 20th century, wow. and it was only when they did some housing redevelopment in the area they put in mm -hmm. a lot of homes um, along Sagamore Street. That uh, then, in fact, the bridge was removed. Mm -hmm. And actually, when I was leading the walk, um, I was talking to one of the homeowners. There are three homes, the foundations of which were built so, on the on, stones from that bridge. Wow! So next time. Next time I want to go into his basement. <laughs> See, this has 1793. It was. Started. All right, all right. So yeah. actually, let's go to another map and talk Which a bit more about this. You, okay. You like this map? <clears throat> actually, if you click on, uh, try clicking on that and just sort of oh. see, see if, get see if it actually goes yeah. uh, bigger or wider like that. So the Middlesex Canal, um, with the Middlesex Canal Corporation, 
who was first chartered in 1793. It was actually the, one of the, I think it was the very first publicly held corporation in the United States of America. Mm. Uh, as such, there was actually a tract on the old Middlesex Canal published by Harvard University in the 1930s mm -hmm. because of its role in the, in the beginnings of corporations. It, they even had eminent domain authority in order to, so that they could take land in order to uh, uh, build the canal. Right. Okay. It was chartered by the state legislature in about 1793. Um, I'll show you an interesting document about that in a little bit here. But this is really quite the length here. It's about it's 27 and a quarter wow. miles, and about a third of it is still intact in one form mm -hmm. or another. You know, which is really kind of an incredible thing. Yeah. So it actually connected down around Somerville, uh, Charleston. This it area. actually passed through. You were Somerville. in this area. Uh, I was up by along the Mystic Lakes, the eastern shore of the Mystic Lakes, which is now the Mystic Valley yeah. Parkway. Okay. Um, the Mystic Valley Parkway was oh, in Mystic fact. Mystic Lakes is right um, here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was the Middlesex Canal. Okay. And we actually uh, it, it arched over the top of it and crossed mm -hmm. over and on its way up through Horn Pond, eventually making its way all the way up to the middle, um, the Merrimack River, in what was then called Middlesex Village, mm -hmm. right? Uh, or um, which is now part of the western portion of the city of Lowell. Okay. Lowell didn't actually exist at the time. Wow. <laughs> right? Um, actually, if you go down to the map right below here, this one maybe is a much more sort of a stripped down version. The previous one we showed was from a fellow named Will Hoxie, Wilbur Hoxie, who was okay. a colonel, and he was a really incredibly knowledgeable guy. Uh, I've known a lot of the people who've been associated with the mm -hmm. Middlesex Canal Association. Some, quite a few of them have now passed away. Mm. Um, but I've personally been involved in one form or another for at least 20-something years. And so, I'm the webmaster. So, so good. So, this, so, is, this, so this, is a, this is one from a fellow named Bert uh, Verplank, who was a wonderful fellow. Um, much more stripped-down version, just to sort of show the towns that the Middlesex can have passed through. Here's the Mystic Lakes. Okay. Right. So you see there's, there's the Mystic Lakes. What's the red dotted line? Is the red the dotted line is the root of the Middlesex Canal. Okay, yeah. so... And there's just some demarcations for these various maps I that, uh, that um, Bert put together. And what um, is the solid line? That's just to, just to show the, the widths of the maps, oh, the basically, width. I that's see. all. Okay. Right, but it's the red dotted line, and mm -hmm. it actually begins, it's Sullivan Square, Charlestown. Yeah. Now, what you may not know is where's, who's the Sullivan of Sullivan Square? I don't there's so many Sullivans that were in politics. No. Well, the Sullivan of Sullivan Square is actually uh, uh, the first president of the Middlesex Canal Corporation. Oh, that makes sense. Because that's actually where it began. Okay. He also was uh, attorney general and governor of Massachusetts uh -huh. uh, later on. Um, so went through there, went through pieces of, of Somerville, like mm -hmm. around where the Home Depot is to, to oh, this yeah, day. Oh, yeah, sure. There's a place called Foss Park. Uh, oh, yeah. That's and like, it cut yeah. right through mm -hmm. Foss Park. Okay. Uh, when our, where the public housing is along the edge of Somerville, along Route 38. Mm -hmm. And it over where, and for those who know yeah. where Boston Avenue Bridge is, it crosses the Mystic River, right parallel right to where, there. Uh, you know, there's like a Whole Foods yeah. store pretty close to there, along uh -huh. Route 16 and the Alwife Brook Parkway. Um, parallel to the railroad 16, tracks is right the Boston there. Avenue Bridge. And that's actually, that's built on the abutments of the original hmm. bridge that took the canal over the Mystic River. Wow. Right, and then went up along Horn Pond, found its way, crossed over the Abergiona River, went up along, you know, excuse me, along Mystic Lakes, then went up along the Horn Pond, mm -hmm. um, where there was actually a series of three oh, double locks, okay. and it was a real, it was actually a, a popular place for day trips uh, during mm -hmm. the life of the canal. People would take a boat, packet boat, up to Horn Pond for recreational purposes, and mm -hmm. then take the, the, the boat back later in the day. But it goes up there. The high water mark was up at um, the Concord River in North Billerica. North Biller, where's that? Um, <clears throat> well, it's we actually. Have Woburn, it's... <laughs> yeah, so it goes up through oh, Woburn, Wilmington, it crosses the Shawsheen River. And oh, over there are here. still, I'll show okay. you a picture in a second of the, yeah. the still existent abutments of the, the aqueduct that took the canal over mm. the Shawsheen River uh, and went up to the site of the t floating towpath at the uh, Concord right River. Here. That was the high water well, Here's mark. the Concord River. Okay. Yeah, and that's in North Billerica, and that's where the water for the entire canal came from there. Goodness. So it flowed south toward Boston, and it flowed north to the Merrimack, here's which the is Merrimack. shorter. Right. Yeah, 
um, you know, and, and they're existing pieces of it today. Okay. So nice. just to show you, we still exist. Yeah. We'll just scroll down a little bit here and we'll just sort of randomly grab an imager three, right? So just to show you little bits and pieces here, here's another one. So today, this is uh, today, I mean, I took this picture some time ago, but mm -hmm. this is actually Ball. through a golf course in Lowell. Mm. Uh, and, and they've now creatively maintained the, a piece of the Middlesex Canal. So that's it, it runs, right there. Yep, runs right so through no the golf course. No one can actually put a boat in the Middlesex Canal. For a while in the city yeah. of Woburn, up around Route 128, there's a place called the Szechuan 2 Restaurant. Is actually That was the home of Luomni Baldwin, mm. who was the chief engineer of the Middlesex Canal. They actually moved the house to the other side of the canal. But, but the thing is, is up there, they are completely water-filled sections in Woburn. All right, what am I thinking they, of in Lowell where you can take the... Um, well, that's actually along the... What's that? There are multiple Pawtucket canals in Lowell. Canal. That's, that, and that's, that's along right. the Pawtucket Canal right. that'll okay. take you up to the yes, Merrimack I've River. Yes, I've done that. Yeah, the Middlesex Canal predates all of them, mm. right? Yeah. And in fact, it predates every, every significant canal in, uh, canal in the entire United wow. States of America. Really? Yes. Oh, it's, it's actually worth noting that... Mm. Uh, I mean, that's why I say there's this incredible history, history. around... Well, we were... I mean, here. it is, you know... 16 whatever I mean, you know, <clears throat> right we're so, older than california right so some of the original backers of the middlesex mm -hmm. canal included john adams uh, uh uh -huh. john hancock i'll show you a document about that in a second here yeah right actually, actually this is an interesting picture just to show this you the, the some picture, of the remaining right? pieces Wait, of it just to get there okay all right so this is this right here um this is a picture oh, in it's like a japanese villarica Really? Okay, and what uh, it's from? I think it's from Lake Street in Villarica. I think mm. it's called Lake Street. I forget now. But the thing is, is that what happened when after the dissolution of the Middlesex Canal Corporation, which I believe is in the 1860s, many pieces of the canal and the parcels were sold off, and people built house lots and whatever. So there was a family. I actually know this only because I ran into some of the family members there. Oh yeah. Twenty something years ago, it's when I took this picture. And I was um, speaking to him, and this was, they call it, this is the Gum Family Compound. Wow. So what they did is they had a house on one side of the canal, and as the family had children, they built additional houses. Hmm. So they have multiple houses on either side of the canal. That doesn't exist now, does it? Yes, it does. Really? <laughs> and they built these, they just put oh. in these, these are not original, they, they built them. I see. And they built these uh, footbridges they own this the land. Canal. They, they, were own, they own the land. Oh, wow. Yeah, and they own that section of the canal. It's theirs. But this now. is 20 years ago. I wonder what it looks like now. I think it probably looks just as good. But really? I haven't been there that lately. much greenery and beautiful? Oh, well, it depends on the time of year. True. <laughs> Maybe True. not this time of year. But not overdeveloped. But I, the saying. last time I was there, they had beautiful, they had potted plants oh, hanging from the goodness. bridge. I'd love to and see this. And there's this incredibly historic Middlesex Canal running right down through the property. But how are you allowed to walk there if it's part um, of the property? I, well, you, you, you really shouldn't, but path. I don't yeah. think they mind too much, but I just, yeah. I was talking with them, so I just walked I in see. with them. Uh, okay. But this is visible from the road, actually. Okay. Right. I'd um, love to see that. Yeah. Oh, no, it's it's really great. I mean, it's all these really wonderful photo. adventures you can take, yeah. right, uh, including this one here. Um, so, um, I, by the way, just so you know, a scale of some of what was transported mm -hmm. on the Middlesex Canal. Mm -hmm. If you've ever been to Faneuil Hall in Boston, all those big gran the big granite columns and the granite they built Faneuil Hall uh -huh. from, it was all floated down from, the Middlesex wow, Canal. amazing. Yeah. So, you know, there's, as I say, there's it's just history. this tremendous amount of history yeah. just um, ready to be okay. had. All right, so here's, a, here's another image. Wait, don't go there. I want to see the remains of the, okay. Of the Shoshin River Aqueduct. Okay. All right, so you go if that. you go up to where Wilmington meets Billerica, you know, if you go mm. up Route 129, um, if you look to the side of the road, it's like right next to the road, you see mm. this. What you'll see is mm. this incredibly spectacular remnant of the abutments yeah. of where the Middlesex Canal, this is actually taken from the other side of the road, looking toward the road. Yeah. So you can see in the background, you can actually you see, see the, Route 129. Sure. Yeah. So the water here is the Shawsheen River. Mm. And the Middlesex Canal actually came from left to right, right to left, across the top. So it was like 30 some odd feet above the level of the mm -hmm. river. So it was basically a bun, one uh, route of water route over another. Hmm. Almost like a river over a river. So, there, so this part was an actual a wooden uh, yes. something was yeah, across this, this. That's right. And in fact, originally it was a much wider uh, aqueduct. Yeah. In later years, what they did is they sort of shortened the width uh -huh. uh, and uh, fill, did some fill. Uh, but then they did this. And by the way, this was actually had kind of fallen apart, you know, by yeah. vandals. So this was actually put, you was know, the restored? stones were restored. 
And there's a plaque on the other side basically marking this as a landmark mm. for American civil engineering. Civil, wow. Arguably, civil engineering in America didn't exist before the Middlesex Canal. Mm. And it was uh, parts of, of civil engineering were invented, Amazing. at least for the United States of America, um, um, with the Middlesex Canal. In fact, mm. the, when the Erie Canal was built uh, in like 1820s, the uh, Erie Canal commissioners came to Massachusetts to, to learn wow. how to build a canal. Because right. <laughs> we did, the expertise right. simply didn't exist So wait, before in the you go, this is then a, <clears throat> the bank. Of, this is a, a you know, the canal was going over the top, so what you're seeing... Right, I know, it, but this it, is like... A, there's I a little see dip what, there. That yeah. was actually part of the profile of the canal. It came across over the top and then over to the other, to the right side. Right, but this is a barrier here. No, 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 the, that's a no? bridge that's just, that's oh, not that's even connected bridge. to okay. it. That's a road right. bridge today, a modern wow. bridge. Amazing. Yeah, right. I mean, it's, which it kind of looks, you know, it's of a similar yeah. style. Mm. But as I say, you just if you were to go up along Route 129, just uh, up past where all the auto dealerships mm -hmm. are in Wilmington yeah. and just follow up that away, that's exactly what you'll see right along there. All right, so here's another, uh, just another little piece of a map. The is, towpath is where they took buff horses or donkeys? Yeah, so the thing is, is all of this yeah. predates power. There was no power right. on this canal. So, so the you way you... do anything. So you moved, <laughs> you moved cargo and yeah. passengers because you had donkeys and mm -hmm. mules and big tow lines that would actually pull the boats along the uh, route of the canal. So there's one side of the canal, that's what they call the berm, it mm -hmm. just basically held the water in. Sometimes it was up against the hillside, then mm -hmm. the hillside held the water in. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and the other side is the towpath. Right. So the animals, and the towpath moved from side to side at various different places along the canal. Uh, but the thing is, is uh, uh, so you can you can go along pieces of the canal today, and you can still see visible remnants of the berm on one side mm -hmm. and the towpath on the other side. I think the Erie side. Canal actually is a national uh, historic. I've been actually by it once. The, you can actually go along a lot. I I took my old my old VW oh, bus and spent two trip? weeks along the Erie oh. Canal. I, d I did a boat ride around Lockport, but uh -huh. the thing is that I mainly what I did was I just popped into every little lock tender's house and so talked to the lock So have they actually preserved the whole thing? The Erie Canal. Part of it, right? The Erie Canal has been in continuous operation no. ever since it was began. Wait a minute, so they still use it for actual? Yes. It's not just yes. a tourist thing? Yeah, the Erie Canal oh, was dates to about 1825. Wow. And um, and it was originally called Clinton's Ditch because DeWitt Clinton was the governor of Massachusetts of uh, New York, New York right. and they, they kind of demeaned it a little bit, like yeah. Seward's Folly Ditch. for Alaska, yeah. right? Yeah. And um, and the thing is, is that um, once it opened, it actually was very successful. Hmm. But it was also relatively narrow. It was just yes. enough True. to make it work, but not more. I think there's more. a bike trail along there. They Multiple. The, yeah, Multiple. I, I definitely want to do that. Right. No, it's really kind yeah. of fun actually. So so mm -hmm. along there. Um, uh, they once it proved successful, but there were some problems, like where you crossed Skahari Creek. Um, it was actually right at river level, and when the rivers would rise, oh. it actually washed out and destroyed the canal. So it was the they, only time it was out of operation so for a while. How have they dealt with that? So what they did was, by, by approximately 1850, they rerouted the route of the canal and built the second iteration of it. Oh. Some of it was just they widened the existing canal, uh -huh. and other places they actually had to move it wow. so that they could get a different course. Mm -hmm. And now there, was, there are these amazing remnants, I have great photos, oh. of, um, of these gigantic aqueducts that took the waters, it took the canal, Erie Canal I, I definitely over. want to do a bike trip or something right. like that. And then, and then Teddy Roosevelt, during mm -hmm. his time as governor in Massachusetts, and yeah, he keeps saying Massachusetts, President. right? President. Um, but he was a big, big promoter of canals as well. And, uh, and, and that was, uh, so he promoted the, and he, not just him, but he was a promoter of the New York State Barge Canal. And for the, that was the third iteration of the Erie Canal, where they mm. canalized parts of the Mohawk River. They mm. actually moved sections of the canal to up to like where Cohoes is in New York. Amazing. Um, Without electricity, huh? Uh, well, that's oh, right, actually. But I think they had some electricity by then. But yeah, so the modern one, the modern ones are they're pulling barges. They're not, they're not horse drawn anymore. No, but it's right. Is it? It's so Water yeah. So the thing is, it's still done with locks yeah. And, yeah. and everything, and it's a spectacularly Amazing. great thing to visit. The the locks are still operated by the yeah. the same motors that have been in operation for over a hundred years. Wow. DC motors. 
They don't make them like they used to. They don't make them like they say. And the lock tenders take them apart and service them. I was hanging out with the lock tenders as they were doing it. It was great. Um, And uh, they repurposed some of the the double locks, uh, flights of locks Mm -hmm. in Lockport. Mm -hmm. Uh, So this one is just more of a historic relic now of the original. And then they have the other one, which is these gigantic locks that they lift. They replace five locks with two Mm -hmm. in Lockport. Really great. But it has to connect to the Great Lakes up in Buffalo or Mm -hmm. Tonawanda Creek. Uh, So to do that, they actually had to, by hand, because this predates dynamite or anything, they had to chisel their (laughs) way through. Predates dynamite? Yeah, they had to pre. They had to chisel their way, you know, human power through the Niagara Escarpment in order to basically get through uh, to connect. I guess that's a whole other issue or story about who is doing all this work. Actually, that's that's a great story too because there were a lot of immigrant people. This was a major form of labor for a lot of people. True. And there are many stories associated with it. But but as I was saying, Middlesex Canal predates them all. It's it's sort of the granddaddy Mm. of them all, and and it's ours. You know. So we'll show this. We have it. So again, we did mention that um, about Sullivan Square. So here you go. Look at this one right here. What you see is it says on the left. You can see it says Middlesex Canal. Yeah. So it's actually coming in. And it's crossing where you see it says Bunker Hill Street. So that's really where Sullivan Square is today. Yeah, right and here. it comes down okay. into this mill pond, a mill basin. Yeah. Right? So this is all along Rutherford Avenue, down yeah. the southern yeah, portion where we of have this. Cassell and all those places. Right, it's, it's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. In fact, there are historic markers in front of the hood plant that's mm-hmm. there, um, and actually in front of the, um, the T station. All right, at Bunker Hill, is it Sol- Sullivan Square yeah. T Station? Is it? Yeah. Yeah, and um, you know, so so anyway, it's all quite. I mean, yeah. you don't see visible remnants there, though they did do a um, when they did an excavation there, along Rutherford Avenue a few years ago mm-hmm. during right on the parts of the Bunker Hill Community College campus. Right. They actually uncovered some of the original lock wow. structures from the Middlesex Canal, but um, just to, to continue a little more on that, so. There was actually a way you could exit from the canal right there to get into what's essentially the harbor and the Charles River and well, really the Millers still, River Basin. Well, actually, this has all been... That's the built. neck of Charlestown yeah. to the right, Somerville to the left. Mm-hmm. Uh, in fact, there's a great historic book what about this, Somerville called what, Beyond the Neck because it used this? to be part of Charlestown. Oh, what is this? Right? Uh, what does just, that say? Just, I can't uh, read it. Probably a, a, um, not actually sure that okay. is. But the thing is, is that they would act, then actually um, take the boats and they would pull them by cables that were mm. submerged in the water across the Charles River, mm. Miller's River, Charles River Basin, mm. pulling them over to the Boston side. Which would be up here. Yeah, which and unfortunately, no, no, just oh. east of there. Um, and it's not shown in this particular map yeah. here, but it would then pull into Canal Street in Boston. Wow. And, the, and pull into the final terminus, which was Haymarket. Of course. Haymarket yeah, Square. Makes sense. Right. So Amazing. anyway, so that's a, a, a kind of an interesting well, it is piece the of orange things. line is actually Haymarket goes out to Sullivan. Yeah, Square, I mean, I it's yeah. but the thing is, I was curious when mm-hmm. I first came here, I said, what's the big deal? Why is Haymarket called Haymarket? Yeah. Why is it a big deal? It really was the southern terminus of the canal. And it was a real center of commerce because you could move uh, goods like mm-hmm. uh, lumber and whatever from New Hampshire. Right. And pull it all the way down to uh, Boston Amazing. this way. Um, there's an interesting little, there's lots of history on this here. There are, there are people, there were actually merchants and, and uh, investors in Boston were the ones who were behind the Middlesex that Canal. That's what this letter is? Yeah, I'll show you a little bit of that in a sec. Mm-hmm. Um, and part of that is that there were other people who wanted Newbury and Newburyport to be sort of the port, which is a tougher sell because... It's further the, away. And also the, 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 the waters and the channel out around there are our much ocean. more treacherous. Well, Boston's much water. more of a yeah. harbor, I think. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, is that uh, there was a competition. The Pawtucket Canal had been cut just to bypass the falls in Lowell. So then the Middlesex Canal came along and said, ah, 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 we would like that business in Boston. Mm. So they actually shortcut it and took the goods straight down in Boston. Mm. And then that put Boston on the map as the wow. preeminent port of the day. Interesting. Right? So it's, and, and just to connect this a little bit to Cambridge, then I'll show you the letter. We'll probably talk a little more about this too. Um, the thing is, is that um, uh, though there, the connections are a little more amorphous, once the Middlesex Canal was established, it came into the, essentially the Millers River Basin <clears throat> over uh, where, you know, Somerville meets, Somerville, Cambridge meets Charlestown. 
then uh, the, some of those very same investors mm -hmm. actually built canals around uh, Kendall Square, mm. uh, and investors wanted to create a whole port in that part of here, basically to capitalize on the fact that this was that all this commerce was now moving up and down this canal. It was interrupted by the War of 1812, I would add. Though. So that never materialized, did <clears throat> it? I mean, there's always been this you know, it, science museum it, it, there. And the, it kind of fell yeah. apart, saw a lot of the investor plants. Yeah. But the thing is, is that in addition to the Broad Canal, there was another canal the on the other canal. side of Broadway, parallel canals. There was a North Canal, which was parallel Portland Street, basically where the railroad trucks are tracks are now, mm -hmm. which connected over to by Lambert and Gore Street and the Twin City Plaza, mm -hmm. which was all underwater back then. That was actually where the Millers River came in. Wow. So you could take that canal right over there, right over to where the Middlesex Canal came mm -hmm. in. right? And just to sort of show you one little bit of uh, more history here, just to show you some of the originators, the original shareholders in the Middlesex Canal, we have this names. little document here, you know. John Hancock. You know, right at the top. Don't yeah. you, wouldn't you know it? Yeah, John Hancock. Right? 20, he, he did, they gave money. $40. 20, it says 20, 20 $40. but then over the what right the it says $40. Yeah. Okay. Um, not sure, really. 20 shares, maybe. maybe. 20 shares at $40. 20 shares at $2 a pop. Let's see, yeah. five shares at $10. Yeah. That would make sense. Yeah. But I, I love the fact that it Oliver was there Wendell. just at the, yeah. the top of the Declaration of Independence with the name John Hancock. So this is like uh, 20 years later, 20 years later, yeah. there he is right at the top. Of same, the, almost of the, same of signature, here. too. Pretty much, yeah. Look at this penmanship. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. Well, yeah. People it, can't write like that. Well, right. this person is like a Trump down there. I could see that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no. Someone's actually crossed out right in Right. But, the, yeah, uh, whatever. Yeah. So there's Oliver Wendell, who I'm sure yeah, is a that, relation like, to Oliver sure. Wendell Holmes. Yeah. So. Amazing. Right. So anyway, wow, uh, maybe we'll show a few more things in the next half hour. Then we could talk about some of the more local stuff here. All right. So, but um, anyway, I hope people Very, can at least appreciate why I yeah. find this kind of interesting. Yeah, I've only been on one of yours, yeah. so I'll have and to I'll, do another. And I'll give an open invitation if anybody wants to go up there. I'll, I'll, I'll walk with you. Just give me a ride. Just give me a ride. All right. See you in a couple. Bye.